In this unit, we're going to cover the basics of number bases. We're going to go over the decimal system, the binary system, the octal system, and the hexadecimal system. A number base is a system of representing a number using a given range of digits. For example, we use the decimal system, where the digit range is 0 to 9. Finding the number base. <clears throat> when you see a number that is in a base other than base 10, the decimal system, it will usually be followed by a subscript telling you the base that it's in. So if we had an example, if we had a number 8549, that would be a decimal because they didn't list the base. AF42 looks a little weird, we'll talk about that later, um, but it's in base 16 or hexadecimal. 743 is an octal, that's why it has an 8 behind it. And one zero one zero one zero zero sorry zero one one is in binary, and that's why it's got a base two. Number base rules: the allowed digits range from zero to the base minus one. Example in our binary system, sorry in our decimal system, uh, which is base ten, the allowed digits are zero to nine. Ten is not actually a number in our system; it's a combination of a 1 in the tens place and a 0 in the ones place. The place value is the base raised to the distance it is from the ones place. Remember the first number is always the we always have the ones place first. So <clears throat> here is our base raised to 0. This is 0 away from the ones place. It is the ones place. 10 to the 0 is 1. That's why this is the ones position. This is the tens position because it is 10 raised to the 1. This is the 100s place because it is 10 raised to the 2. 10 times 10 is 100. When, when adding, you carry 1 each time you reach the base. So in decimal, we carry a 1 for every 10. When you are borrowing, you reduce the place you are borrowing, borrowing from by 1 and... <coughs> uh, by 1. It says and it should be add the base to the receiving place. So this should be add. Let's mark that out. Laser. Nope. Didn't mean laser. I wanted pen. I'll go fix the slides later, but I change this to that should be a comma, I bet too. Okay. When you bar uh, when you are borrowing, you reduce the place you are borrowing from by one. And then we proceed to add the base to the receiving place. Example, in decimal, we gain 10 when we borrow. Okay, we're looking at the decimal system. <clears throat> um, the base is 10. The allowed digits are 0 to 9. And the place values are 10 to the 0, 1 to the 0, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4. So this is the 1's place. This is the 10's place. This is the 100's place. This would be the thousands place, and this is the ten thousands place. So when we evaluate a number, this is 156. So, granted, we don't need to, we know what 156 is, but this is going to help us when we get to other things. So, if we have a 6, it's in the ones place. If we have a 10, sorry, a 5, it's in the tens place. And this 1 is in the one hundreds place. So we can see why this is number 156. It's 1. Let's mark that out. It's 100, because we have a 1 in the 100th place. Then we have 5 times 10. So 5 tens would be 50. And then we have 6 ones. So that's how this works out. We have 1 100, we have 5 tens, and we have 6 ones. Over here, We have three one hundreds, so this is three hundred and twenty-eight, so the twenty comes from having two tens, and the eight comes from eight in the ones position. <clears throat> when we add in decimal, remember every time we reach the base number, in which decimal, the base number is ten. Every time we reach a ten, we carry a one. Here you have six plus eight, that gives you fourteen. So you write down 4 
and you carry to 1 because of the 10. Here we have 13, so we carry a 1 because there's 1 10 in that with 3 left over. And then we have 6. I'm just going through this. I know y'all know how to add, but when we get to the other bases, hopefully this will help you kind of get the idea of what's going on with the other bases. All right. 1 plus 8, 9. 6 and 7, 13. So it's a 3 with a 10 left over. So 8, 12. There's one 10 in there. And then 2 is left over. Subtracting. Anytime we have to borrow, we borrow 10. So here we can't do 5 minus 7, so we borrow. So 5, sorry, when we borrowed, we got 15. So I'll just mark this out so you can clearly see it's 15. 15 minus 7 is 8. <clears throat> here we can't do 1 minus 7, so we borrow. 4, and that'll make this an 11. 11 minus 7 is 4, 48. And then there's nothing left in this category. All right, over here, <clears throat> when we borrow, we borrow from the 6. We get 5 because we can't do 1 minus 8. So this becomes 11, and we get 3. I have to borrow again. This will go down to a 6. This will go up to a 15. 15 minus 7 is 8. 6 minus 4 is 2. And I believe that gets us through the decimal system. So we'll start talking about something a little more interesting. <clears throat> when we're in base 2, we're only allowed values 0 and 1. I know it says base 2, but again, like with decimal, you get 1 less than the base. So the only possible numbers in binary are 0 and 1. And to find the place values, 2 to the 0, 1's place. 2 to the 1 is 2's place. 2 to the 2 is the 4's place. 2 to the 3 is the 8's place. 2 to the 4 is the 16's place. Binary to decimal. If we want to know what something is in binary, sorry, what the decimal equivalent of a binary number is, we're going to follow the rules, the following steps. Multiply each digit by its place value then sum the results. <clears throat> so I'm going to write this out a little bit bigger. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is 2 to the 0, which is 1. This is 2 to the 2, which is... Sorry, 2 to the 1, which is 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. 2 to the 3 is 8. 2 to the 4 is 16. 2 to the 5 is 32. And when we follow this procedure, for binary, it's really easy. We have 132. 1 times 32 is 32. So we get 32. 0 times 16 is 0. 1 times 8 is 8. 0 times 4 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. And 1 times 1 is 1. So then if we want to know what this is in decimal, we just have to add these numbers together. That'll make it 10. We have 3. So 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 1 is going to be 43 in base 10. There's a little subscript for you. 32. Yep. All right, now let's do this one. 1, uh, let's mark that out. I'm not going to have enough room. 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. We have a 1 in the 1's place, the 2's place, and we have a 4's place, the 8 the 16, and the 32. The only bits that are on is we have 1, 32, so we got a 32. We have a 16. We have an 8. There aren't any 4s. We have a 2, and we have a 1. So that's a 10. So we carry a 1. And we got 8, 9. So 9. I'm almost out of where it's recording, so I'll be careful. And then there's 5 left, so this is 59. All right, moving on to the next slide. <clears throat> Decimal to binary. You're going to find the first place that is too large for your number. Then you'll move right one place. You'll check to see if the place value is smaller than your number. If it is, write a 0. Uh, if it's not, Sorry, if it's not, then write a zero. If the place value is smaller than your number, 
you'll write a 1 there saying you would need this place to create the number. Next, reduce your number by the place value. By the place value. Repeat steps 2 and 3 until you've done the 1's place. So <clears throat> this will make a lot more sense when you actually see me do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So we got 42. Now we have all these little places we could possibly do. I'm just going to run through these real quick. This is the ones place. This is the twos place. This is the four. And then an eight. And then sixteen. Thirty-two. Sixty-four. We've went too far. We don't need any sixty-fours to make forty-two. So what we do is we write one in the thirty-two. So down here you'd be keeping track, 42 minus 32. We just represented 32 of our number. We have 10 remaining to represent. We don't need a 16 for that, but we do need an 8. So we subtract off the 8, and we get 2. Do we need a 4? No, we don't need a 4 to make 2. Do we need a 2? Oh yes, we do. So minus 2 equals 0. There's nothing left that we need. And then we put a base 2 behind that. 42 is a 32, an 8, and a 2. So if you were to write out the binary number, it'd be 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. This number's much bigger and harder to represent, so we're going to need more place values. So 181. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, we don't need a 256, too big, so let's start at the 128, and get little bars here for us. We would need a 128, so you do 181 minus 128, and I'll go ahead and do this a long way, 7, 11, got three here. We got 57 left to represent. Sorry, why did I say 57? 53 left to represent. I was looking at that seven. So we don't need a 64 for that, but we do need a 32. So we subtract off the 32 now that we've represented it. One, two. We have 21 left. We'd need a 16 for that. So minus 16 would give us five. We don't need an eight. We do need a four minus 4. We have 1 left. We don't need a 2. We do need a 1. Minus 1, and we are done. <clears throat> so 128 plus 32 would be 160, 176, 180, 181. So we're good there. Adding in binary. <clears throat> so when you add, Anytime you reach the base, which is a 2, you carry. So 1 and 1 make 2. We reach a 2 one time with none left over. We reach a 2, that's 1, 2, with none left over. Here we have a 3. There is 1, 2, with 1 left over. Here again we have a 2. There's 1, 2, with none left over. Here we have 2, 1, 2 with none left over. Here we have a 2, 1, 2, with none left over. And now we've added these numbers. And our answer is in base 2. Here we're going to add on this side, 1 and 1 make 2. So a 2 with none left over. Here again we have a 2 with none left over. We have a 3, that's a 2 with 1 left over. Here we have a 2 with 1 left over, and now I've added these numbers in binary. Let's move on and do subtracting in binary, and then we'll stop this video, and the next video will have hex and octal. So if we're subtracting 1 minus 1, 0. We're good there. But here, <laughs> we can't do 0 minus 1. So what we have to do is we borrow. We reduce this guy. By 1. This guy goes up to a 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Again, we're going to have to chain borrow here. 0, 2, 1, 2, 
2 minus 1, 1. 1 minus 1, 0. 0 minus 0, 0. 1 minus 1, 0. Just like in our system, we don't like leaving zeros, so our final answer is going to be 1, 1, 0, 2. All right, let's go over and work this other one. 1 minus 1, 0. This is a really big chain borrowing. So when I borrow, this guy goes to a 2. I borrow from him, he goes to a 1. This guy goes to a 2. I borrow from him. This guy goes to a 2. And now I can work the problem. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 1, 0. 1 minus 1, 0. Again, we don't want leading zeros, so our answer is 1, 0, 2. If you were to convert that, that's a 1 in the 2's place. This is the number 2. This is the number 6 because you got a 1 in the 4's place and a 1 in the 2's place.